Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, a big warm welcome. My name is Tristan Mortlock and this is Captain's Vlog. In today's video, we're going to do a full in-depth tour of the engine control room here on board most of your AWOL. Now the engine control room consists of electrical equipment, mechanical equipment, hydraulic, we have the fire pumps, we have the steering pumps, the air conditioning room, and the general controls and switches for the onboard electrical systems for the 24 volts and for the 220 volts. So let's get started. Just a short interruption guys to tell you about today's sponsor, Absolute Magnitude. Now Absolute Magnitude, they supply paint and gel coat polish products, stainless steel polish and protection, eco-friendly teak cleaning and treatment, dry ice cleaning, anti-fouling and ultra pure water cleaning technology. Now I can vouch for AM because we on board Motor Your AWOL have been using them for many, many years and all their products are fantastic and we have nothing but good thing to say about them. So go and check them out at www.absolute-magnitude.com or send them an email at info at absolute-magnitude.com. Okay, so to start with, here on the starboard side, this is the, um, the power pack for our steering, for the rudder. So it runs on, it's got a 220 pump, uh, 24 volt pump as well as, as the backup. And what that does, it runs through the hydraulic pump system and it um, helps us to steer the vessel to port or starboard. So basically by rotating the two rudders that we have aft underneath the hull of the vessel. Here, what these do, these are the main electrical control boards for the, for the steering. So you've got the 24 volt and the 220 volt um, electrical boards here. Furthermore, you see what we have over here. This is the muffler for the starboard side generator exhaust. Here we have the manual backup. So what this does is it's the control unit for the garage door, the hydraulic garage door that goes up and down. And what also used to be the control unit for the controls we used to have for the tender carriage. We used to have a carriage inside the garage that would launch and recover the tender. But since we bought the boat, the carriage has been removed and we've turned the garage more into a storage space for more water toys. As we go further down here, you will see that we have a couple of pumps here. So here we have the fire and bilge pumps. So what these do, if we have uh, water in the bilges and we're taking on, taking on water, let's say the hole's been damaged, these pumps will pump water from the bilge to the outside of the vessels, to the, to the sea. And also we have a number of fire hydrants on board. We have seven fire hydrants on board. It will also pressurize the hydrants. So these are one of the hydrants that I can show you, for example. So what we do, we got the fire hose here. We remove the cap. Make, always make sure the caps are checked uh, monthly. Make sure they're well lubricated. Bit of a drip there, no problem. And then we basically take the end of the hose, this side. We obviously unwrap, unwrap the hose and then this basically goes on the end here and then it screws on like so. On the other side we have the no nozzle that screws in as well to, um, to control the pressure of the water coming out of the, the fire hose. Now next to the um, fire and bilge pump we have the, um, the hydraulics for the, uh, for the garage door and what used to be the carriage. So you remember, as I mentioned, up here was the control box. These are the hydraulics for the garage and for the um, unused carriage now as well. As we turn around, I want to show you what we have here. This here is the control unit for our sewage treatment system. So what we have, we have a Herman system on board. Now Herman is a manufacturer of our sewage treatment system. And basically what it does, it breaks down the sewage that we generate on board by using chlorine. So we go underneath, I'm going to show you shortly, we have a pump system which sucks the sewage through and then mixes it and macerates it with the chlorine before, before discharge. So we'll take a quick look just to show you guys how the system works and uh, 
where it's located. So here, as you can see, this, in this white box here, we have the container which contains the chlorine. We've got the pumps, which pumps all the sewage around and then mixes the chlorine with the sewage. That then will get discharged um, a, short, a short facility because we're currently on, on the dry dock. Now, continue the tour. Here we have the control boards for the ventilation in the engine room itself. So we can control the amount of air coming in and the amount of air that's being extracted. So ideally, um, you want to keep your engine room at a positive pressure because if it's a negative pressure, then the engines are kind of suffocating because they're sucking for that, for that air because they're consuming a lot of gallons of air every second. So it's constantly sucking in. So you always wanna make sure you're pumping in more, more air than you are taking out. So it's always a positive pressure that we have here inside the, uh, the engine room. So when you come to the engine room, what do you want to make sure when the engines are running at their cruising speed is that when you open the door, there's a positive pressure. And you know that because the door will kind of like almost push itself open. You don't want it to slam open because you can, you know, obviously hurt yourself. But you want like a steady positive pressure so it opens, it pushes open. If you come to the engine room door and it's like really stuck, it, it probably means that there's not enough pressure in the engine room and you've got to consider the possibility that your engines might be suffocating and not receiving the air that it needs to run efficiently. So this is the control board here for a 24 volt systems. So as you can see, we've got the emergency fuel transfer pump, the stop and start. We got the backup 24 volt bilge pumps, which we have the, along the entirety of the keel, the inside keel of the vessel, of the bilge is better said. Here we got the voltage for our generator batteries and our main batteries. So at the moment I'm on starboard, you can see I've got about 27 volts. If I go over to port, again, almost 27 as a volt, 26.6. On the engine batteries, on starboard, we've got 27 volts. And on port, again, 27 volts. So that's uh, two thumbs up. That means the, the, jet, the battery charges are working and the batteries are at the correct voltage. As we make our way around this uh, control board, we've got the main transfer pump, which is running on a separate voltage. As I showed you earlier, we've got the 24 volt backup. The main tra pan transfer pump, sorry, runs on 220 power. We've got the clean oil transfer pump. So what does that do? When we're servicing the main engines or the generators, when we suck out the old oil, we need to pump in the new fresh oil. So we do that by connecting the fresh oil hose and turning on the clean oil transfer pump. Again, we have the dirty oil transfer pump. So we need to suck out the old oil from the engines and the generators. It goes into a special um, dirty oil tank and then we turn that on once again it's all hooked up and ready to go here you can see we've got the two controls these are backups for the main engine controls so in other words the throttles so we have three sets of uh, primary throttles on board one on the bridge and we have one on each of the bridge wings starboard and port if those are to fail, then the, then the engineer can take control here and I can give him communication through the radio saying ahead, astern, more speed, less speed. And so basically it's a backup for in case the other system fails. As we move over, again, uh, we have the hot water circulation. So what does that mean? Is that throughout the boat, uh, we can be, for the heating, we've got hot water and for the taps. So when we turn the tap on, the water that comes out is immediately hot. So it's constantly circulating hot water around the boat. So we have guests on board or the crew we want to shower. As soon as we turn the shower on, uh, it's warm water immediately. Why is that beneficial? Because we're reducing uh, our water usage. We're not waiting those 30, 40, 50 seconds for the water to heat up, it's immediate. So the, again, we're using we're minimizing the use of fresh water. We have the um, bilge and fire pumps. If you may remember earlier, I showed you the bilge and fire pump just over here. So these are the controls for the bilge and fire pumps here. Further down, 
these are essentially all the breakers uh, which are pretty much running throughout the boat. This is the 220 or 220 to 230 volt control um, unit panel and here we have the 24 volt DC um, control panel. Further up we look overhead here what we have is these are all the selectors for the pickup points or the suction points better said for all the for the bilge pumping system so we got obviously one through to seven and an extra spare so we can choose where we want the sucking point to be whether it be here under the engine room amidships underneath the guest cabin or you know as far forward as the bow thruster so we can just open and close each valve as we as we wish here we have the bilge pump controls on off start stop and automatic and then we'll make our way over now to the port side of the engine control room and then what i'm going to show you here is a bit more of the electrical uh, items we have on board right so immediate here what you can see we have the control panel this is for the shore power so this is the electricity that's been provided by the shore okay so we can control it here so at the moment this is where we're getting all our electricity from is from the, the cable that we have plugged into the shore these are the controls for the port generator which is this what generator over there and this is for the starboard generator which is that generator over there so as you can see we've got an alarm on the starboard generator and an alarm on the port generator the reason we have that is uh, the alarm is because we've turned off the emergency stop on both generators port and starboard and the emergency stop on the units themselves because we're out of the water so basically it has a system where if the shore power was to fail it will automatically turn off the sorry turn on the the generators so if we have a failure we don't want to turn on because we're not in the water the generators um, uh, need seawater circulation in order to keep them cool and as we're out of the water if they start up they're not going to get cooled so obviously running the danger of overheating the generators so that's why we have the emergency stop buttons engaged here we have the monitoring system throughout the boat it is basically controls things like lighting we can see the levels of the fuel tanks the water tanks the sewage tanks uh, we can see all the different voltage that's been using 24 volt and 220 volt the bill system the oils um, we've got also through here we can see if the door any kind of watertight doors hatches or portholes are open or closed I can see from the bridge as well and then here we can see we've got currently uh, well it was actually 380 volts coming in but it says here uh, 400 volts coming in on the three phase system this will be the voltmeter with the generators when they're running but as you can see the generators off so we're currently producing zero volts okay and then these are the different controls that are on and off for the um, for the generators one and two so port and starboard as we come down here we have the main breaker for the shore power main breaker for the port side generator and the main breaker for the starboard side generator these are all the breakers for the sub panels throughout the different vessels so you can see we've got the crew area so this will then supply all the power to the crew area, crew area. so that'll be things like lighting the fridge air conditioning uh, and power sockets as well and then we've got for the guest area owner cabin and so that's all the main power supplies for throughout the, the vessel here now behind here what we have are the battery charging systems so as you know we've got 220 on board and 24 volts so the 24 volt is running on DC power does that mean that's battery power and what these things are doing these things are running on 220 they're keeping the batteries charged up con continuously so you can see it's labeled here generator battery charger main engine battery chargers and then you got the house battery chargers further down down here as you look up above the battery chargers you can see here it says Alpha Laval now what's an Alpha Laval so Alpha Laval is a full it's a fuel um, filtration system and basically what it does it 
spins at high revolution separating any water and contamination from the fuel so this is a control unit for that particular piece of machinery which is located in the engine room so we'll make our way further around and here we have the controls for what we call the gen clean system so because the generators whenever we're not in port the generators are continuously running to supply power on board so as you can imagine having the generator running continuously means that we've got a lot of exhaust coming out of of the generators so what the gen clean does is that it separates any kind of carbons in the exhaust and filtrates them through minimizing the amount of muck and uh, dirty exhaust going out into the atmosphere and the way it is it is six separate long uh, tube shaped filters which basically grabs all the all the carbons and all that soot that you don't want to um, put out in the atmosphere and filters it out as we come around here these is the control board for our air conditioning system so we've got two separate ways of doing it we've got our cooling and then we've got our heating so two separate systems cooling and heating here we have the pumps for our sprinkler system so we have a fire on board we've got an automatic sprinkler system and uh, which is activated by heat and then here you can see this is the control board for that same sprinkler system and that is pretty much up. one more thing actually i'll show you guys is up ahead over top here these are the main uh, boards monitoring boards for the two main engines port side and starboard the caspillars so we've got caspillar c32 engines on board we've got our freshwater tank gauge analog gauge here black water and the fuel and so that's pretty much all the equipment that we're running here in the engine control room um, so in the next episode after this one we'll be continuing and doing a tour of the engine room itself I'll be showing you the main engines the water makers the generators all the pumps the stabilizer power packs and I uh, hope you guys tune into the next video as always I really do hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you're new to the channel please do consider subscribing because it really does help us to produce more videos if you like this video give it a thumbs up and uh, we have some great super yacht caps and merchandise so check out uh, the merch shelf below and i look forward to seeing you guys all next video